Hey y'all, so I just got home from Frocktails and I'm rolling right into my next project, which is a wedding guest dress. And I plan to use McCall's 8341. And I'm gonna use the view that the model has on. And I just got word from Joann's that my fabric should be coming here tomorrow. So I'm just gonna cut out my size tonight and then tomorrow I'm gonna cut my fabric and then I'll ease into this. So let's go ahead and get started. So I cut a size 20 out of this pattern. There are many, many pieces to this pattern. So the front has about three pieces to create the actual center front piece. And then the back also has three pieces to create the center back pieces and then the sleeves as well. And then you have your facings. So it was quite an undertaking and none of the pieces actually required you to cut two of them except for the sleeves. It's extremely important to look at the pattern instructions to see how to lay out your pattern pieces for the fabric. So I'm working with a charmeuse that I got from Joann's and when I cut out all of my pieces, I did all of my markings and everything and they all disappeared on this fabric. And so it was um, a little annoying to say the least to have to go back and remark everything. Um, also, I would recommend that you finish all of your sides and all of your seams and edges and whatnot. This is supposed to be like the cutout area right here. And a facing will go right here. I'm going to leave the wonder clips in just so that the fabric doesn't slip. But it's not matching up properly. And I'm hoping that it's because that is an opening. So we'll see. I stay stitched the neckline earlier, but this is the cutout right here. So when the facing goes in, this will be tucked under, but this is how it looks so far. So fun fact, anytime that I have like a ton of pieces and it's like fussy cutting, like cut one of this, cut one of that, I always keep the pattern piece with it because of moments like this where you need to go back to the directions and say, okay, I need pattern piece number three. I have kept this pattern piece with it and now I can use it. it makes your life much, so much easier, I promise. So yet again, now that I've realized where and how this piece is laying, I've gone ahead and searched it and now I'm gonna attempt to connect this gathers up on this side we can go ahead and sew this up oh that's pretty I like this already you guys okay. so I am using a micro text needle as I sew because this is a charmeuse and it wasn't slippery or difficult to sew with it was more just so that the markings kept disappearing and here you see that i'm gathering or i'm sewing up the gathers that go on the front bodice of this dress which is actually a really really beautiful touch for this dress and also drew me to this pattern So the front bodice is complete with the ruching on the side and there's going to be a slit at the bottom as well. So this is coming together really nicely. So I'm jumping around because I don't feel like doing this right now. So I'm going to move on to uh, 7 and 8. So this is 7. 7. And this is another situation where I'm gonna have to surge these edges. So correction to what I said earlier, there's actually about five pieces that make up the back bodice of this dress and an invisible zipper as well. So yeah, more pattern pieces than I thought.
So one thing I want to share with you is this, um, I think they call it a clapper. So this is how I've been able to keep my seams pressed open is that I will press it open over at the iron and then I just hold this in place. And I'll be honest with you, this works for um, fabric like this, but also like heavier fabric um, if you're working with outerwear and whatnot. It's just a really helpful tool. It's not a lot of money. I think it's about maybe 16 or $17 on Amazon. I'll put the link below and I don't get any money off that, but I uh, just wanted to share with you how I'm able to get these seams pressed open and stayed open. And then on the reverse side here, the seam looks pretty good. And I have also been using a Microtex needle as well. Um, so that helps with avoiding like any sort of snagging or anything with the dress. Okay, so I'm supposed to attach pattern piece number six to this. I actually had to unpick this um, a few stitches down. So I was really careful with that. And I'm looking at this and this is honestly one side of the back bodice. So I am going to stay stitch this neckline right here so it doesn't stretch anymore. And then I'm also gonna serge these edges here. That way when I connect everything together, it'll be nice and clean on the inside okay so like reason 500 why i love wonder clips so my hypothesis was correct these are all supposed to connect so basically i've wonder clipped this if i were to turn it on the other side you would kind of see what it's supposed to look like when it's one complete um line there so I'm gonna stitch this down and I think I'm gonna cross over at this point. If I won't, then I'll stop. I haven't decided yet, but I'll stitch this down. And then I'm gonna open the seams here. And then I think, cause this is the zipper side, I'm gonna serge this entire thing. So I continued jumping around on the instructions because I wasn't quite quite ready to get to the other side of the bodice and I decided to sew up my sleeves and I'm using a 5-8 seam allowance here but I actually took off more than that because I wanted them to be a little fitted and the sleeves were very large when I tried them on my arms. This pattern does come with set-in sleeves, so I did my basting stitches around the arm side, and when the pattern, or when the two bodices were complete, I was able to attach it. Um, I also took up a little bit on the arm side as well. I actually did a 7-8 seam allowance because the shoulders were drooping so much on my shoulders that I took up more fabric to kind of make it line up with my true shoulder line. Okay, so this is getting real old. <laughs> All these dark, dark markings and then they're disappearing. But um, this is for the right back piece and I'm gonna do it again. And this is the last dart that I have to do on this dress. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if you can see, but I have marked it out again. So now I'm gonna pin it. It's not every day that we see, um, I think they're called like fish eyes or some sort of fish thing, I don't know fish darts something but how I like to do this is I like to pin it just like how you would a normal dart matching um, side to side like this and then put one here before it disappears and one down here before it disappears because it's literally disappearing by the second. Okay. And y'all, there is a bug in this room. Nala is trying to handle it, but it's getting annoying. I can hear it. 
buzzing, literally. Okay, so what I do is I start at the widest point and go down, and then I turn the fabric around, start at this point and go down. started lowering the stitch length as I got closer to the point here. So now I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to stitch from the widest point again, matching up that needle. And I'm taking it back to a 2.4 stitch length as well. same thing on that side as well and in the middle here we've got our dart finished yay after working on the front and back bodices i did attach my invisible zipper and then i put in my set in sleeves and then i did my facings i'll be very honest with you the slit in the front that facing almost ended my sewing career but we got past it and we got through it but this dress i would list it as average but i think your fabric choice makes it harder or easier depending on what you do if i were to make this again i think that i would choose a stable knit versus a charmeuse but here's how it turned out let me know what you think in the comments